Today, I'm going to share with you seven ways you can make money with web design so that you can quit your nine to five and enjoy being your own boss. Hello, I'm your host, Casino. I'm the digital alchemist. And today I'm going to share with you seven ways to get web design clients as your own boss. Now, some of these ways I don't recommend, some of these ways I do recommend. And at the end of this video, I will share with you my most preferred way of making money with web design. So make sure you watch until the end. Now, before I disclose the seven ways, it kind of makes sense, but you should know how to build a website. But if you don't, fear not, because the good news is that you can learn it all for free here on YouTube. You'll find plenty of dedicated channels, among which my own channel. So all you have to do is go on my channel, then click on playlists, and you find plenty of playlists to learn it all. Now I suggest you start with web design and web development right at the bottom. Then you get the WordPress playlist. Uh, let me scroll back up. You also have the Elementor playlist right here. And you have the website redesign playlist, but plenty of other playlists, but you can start with these four. And of course I put links in the description below. Now, the last thing you'd need before I disclose the seven ways to make money with web design is your portfolio. Now, for some of these ways, you don't have to have one portfolio, but it's greatly going to help. While for other ways, you absolutely need one. So I've already talked about this in many videos, but basically it's very simple. All you need is three websites. You can have a one page website, a three pages website and a five pages website. Once again, I've disclosed it all on this channel. So just watch the videos in the playlist and you'll find it all. But to cut a long story short, what I do if I had to start from scratch is just build some fake websites for a start. Just any idea, any passion you have, just build a fake website, a one page website, a three pages website. And then when you get better, and that can go really fast, by the way, you can really do it all in two, three days. In one week, you should be set to go. Now, I'm not saying you're going to be a super professional web designer in two or three days. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying, though, is that if you want to get started, you need to start somewhere, right? So instead of going to uni and study web design for four years, which is you know, something a bit crazy nowadays. I totally believe you can be up and running in a few months or in a few weeks if you're faster, but you have to start somewhere. And today we're just discussing the ways you can make money with web design and not how you can become the perfect web designer because the truth is you can start making money really fast with web design services. So once you got the basics and that you've built a couple of fake projects, now you should build three real life projects. You can go and check out local businesses that either have no website or a really crappy one or even even better, just check out associations and charities that have little to no budget for communication, offer your services for a very cheap amount, at least you're getting paid and you're getting real life experience. Now I should stress that you should put your heart and soul into these projects because they're going to be in your portfolio so you want them to look really really good. Okay now that we all set, let's get started. Okay so the first way to make money is online platforms. Now I've made a few videos where I explained that I really don't like those platforms but here I just want to share a few ways you can make money with web design and I believe that when you're just getting started it can be a good thing to start earning real money with your web design. So more than likely you're going to be ripped off because you're going to have to lower your prices. It's a never ending race to the bottom on those platforms most of the time. But at the same time, some people are totally crushing it on these platforms. So it might be you, but even if that's not the case, at least you're going to get some experience. You're going to learn how to deal with customers and on those platforms, <laughs> let me tell you in advance, you might get some really difficult customers, but it's a good learning school. You're going to learn how to pitch your services and how to handle the client relationship. Now, in that perspective, another platform you could try is Upwork. Now, as I've said in the past, I'm not really a fan of Upwork because I've had a couple of bad experiences, but I was actually trying to outsource a job that I had. So I'm, I was trying to hire someone for a simple task, had a couple of bad experiences, but hey, you might be lucky. Plus, on your hand, you're going to be on the other hand, so you want to get hired. So if you're ethical, if you know what you're doing, now it's you and your luck. Are you going to get good customers or not? But if you're ethical, then why not? If you can start making money, that's really going to boost your confidence, give you more experience that you will need to get bigger clients. Because yeah, most of the time, higher paying clients will want to see some past experience. Now, another platform that in my eyes and in my experience seems to be a bit more upscale compared to five and Upwork. I may be wrong, but I just had a really good experience with 99design. Once again, I was not trying to be hired. I was just trying to outsource some design, actually not web design, but some design. Had a really good experience on 99designs. Now they've been purchased by Vistaprint. So ever since that happened, I 
really don't know because I haven't worked with them. But okay, this is the experience I had. So with 99 Designs, basically you have uh, two options. You can either work directly with clients or you can compete with the community. Now, competing with the community is basically someone's going to come and say, okay, I want a logo and you're going to have an army of designers that are going to compete and the client is going to choose which designer they want. So if it's a logo, even for a logo, that's going to take a long time. But for me, that doesn't really work with web design because if you're going to spend one, two days to present even a concept or even just a few hours and it's three, four, five hours of your time and more than likely there's going to be an army of web designers competing. So there's very little chances that you're going to get the gig. Uh, you may do it a few times just to be competitive and to learn how to get better and win contests. But in the long run, that's really not something I'd like to work with. I would much rather work directly with clients. Number two, working with agencies. So here I'm talking about web design agencies, web design studios, advertising agencies, communications agencies, however you want to call it. The good thing when you work with agencies is that basically you have like one client is the agency. And of course, you're going to have to deal with all the projects. But the more you work with the agency, the more you know how they want to work, uh, what they expect, and plus it's recurring income. But be careful because if the agency is your single client, that's really risky because if they stop working with you, you're losing all of your money, all of your clients, basically all of your business. And yes, it happened to me because at one point I was a subcontractor for an agency and the web design part was going really well. They were making money. It was good, but it was a big advertising agency and they went bankrupt. So when they went bankrupt, basically I lost all my business. So my advice, if you're going to work with agencies is work with agencies, <laughs> plural, not just one agency. Don't put all your eggs in the same basket. And if you want my personal tip to get work with agencies is don't send an email. Just go physically there and meet the people. Why am I saying this? Well, it's very simple. Those agencies get two, three, four, five, ten 10 emails per day uh, from people, freelancers saying, okay, uh, this is what I do. This is my portfolio. I'm the best one, yada, 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 or I'm the cheapest one. That's not what they're looking for. Most of the time, they're not even looking for something. But I remember when I was employed by an advertising agency, one day this guy walks in and then he just presents himself. He was the owner of an agency in the neighboring island. So I live on an island. He was in the sister island. So he had traveled all the way there and basically said that, well, I would just I was passing by and, you know, I heard of you guys. And is it possible to arrange a meeting one of these days? I'm leaving in a couple of days. So basically one of the managers was there and they talked to him. He handed his card and he made a really good impression. And before you know it, he had a business. I think like a month later, there was a campaign for Johnny Walker. So it's a big client. And basically the agency outsourced the marketing campaign. So the email marketing campaign to that guy's agency. So definitely go the extra mile and go physically meet the agencies you want to work with. That's definitely going to show your commitment and that's going to make you stand out from the crowd. Three, remote agencies. So the previous point was about local agencies, but maybe you want to work with remote agencies. It could be in another country, could be in another state, depending on where you live. But the idea is the same. You won't be able to commute to that agency if they want to see you. You will need to work online. So as I just explained for the local agencies, the best way would be to physically go there. Now, it's not always possible. If you live in France and you want to work with an agency in the United States, you're not going to just take a flight just to visit a couple of agencies but maybe if you know you're going to be on holidays in the states from france you could you know have your holidays but then think okay maybe i can visit two three four five ten agencies while i'm there and spend two days visiting all those agencies now i understand it's not always possible and in that case what i recommend is that you record a video because most people are just going to send an email a boring email that's going to be thrown in the bin if it ever makes it to the inbox in the first place it doesn't need to be a fancy video but it needs to show that you've made your homework you know what the agency is all about and you need to show confidence in the video you need to speak with a clear voice and just make them want to work with you. But now the issue is, and we're going to talk about this later in the video. If you just send your video in an email, that's going to be cold emailing, cold calling. And in my opinion, that's never going to work. So what I advise is that first you try to 
bring some rapport with those agencies. Could be on their social media, could be when they post a video, when they post something on Instagram, on Twitter, and build rapport. Try to speak to them. You know, don't just speak to them once and then spam them. No, try to understand what they're all about. It could be in private groups. It could be in forums, if that's still a thing. But more than likely, like I said, on their social media. And then once you've established rapport, ask them directly, is it okay if I send you a little video that I made for you? And trust me, that can work wonders. Four, cold emailing or cold calling. Looking at you, Eric Jones. Now, I'm not gonna lie. I hate cold emailing and cold calling so much that I made a video about it with Jeffrey from Litbox. Now, I know some people totally crush it with cold emailing and cold calling, but it's just not my thing. Now, that being said, maybe it's your thing. So, you can try and see for yourself. Now, personally, I receive a lot of these emails and I never read them. Just the first few sentences and then I know what's in there. And boom, to the bean, blocked, spam, whatever. It's not for me. And so because it's not for me on that end, on the other hand, when I'm trying to sell my services, I don't like to do it. But hey, if you want to try it, be my guest. Just don't try it with me. It's not going to work. Five, SEO or search engine optimization. So SEO is all about being on the first page of Google. So for example, if you're in Newark, New Jersey, you want to find a web designer, people are going to type web design agency in Newark or web design or whatever. Basically, there are 10 spots for SEO. So SEO is going to be organic results. So no ads. So the results you see here. And that can work wonders if you can make it to one of the first 10 spots. Because 93% of the people never make it past the first page of Google. So while I love SEO and I know it works wonders, now you got to be realistic. In some industries, especially if you live in a big city and there are a lot of competitors in terms of web design, you're going to have a hard time ranking for the most successful keywords in the first 10 spots. Or if you do, it means that you're also good at SEO, you're gonna spend a lot of time trying to stay in that first 10 spots. In my case, I did it a few years ago, especially because I decided to leave everything and go live on a tiny island. And competition was less than in big major cities, of course. So it was easier. But you gotta be careful with SEO because if you rank for cheap web design plus the name of your city, but that's what you're gonna get. You're gonna get a lot of cheap clients that don't wanna pay a lot of money for your worth. So you're gonna tell me, easy, just type some other keywords, you know, for high-end, high-scale uh, paying clients. Well, if it was that easy, but the truth is most high-paying clients, they don't hang around on Google to find agencies or web designers they wanna work with. And I'll talk about this later in this video. Now, I'm not saying you cannot get high-paying clients from Google and SEO, I'm just saying there are other ways. But if you can rank, if you're good at SEO, then by all means do it because that's gonna be free traffic and the caching machine <laughs> is gonna be heard. Number six, SEA or search engine advertisement. So SEA is basically the ads you see here on Google and elsewhere. You can also find ads on a uh, network of websites, but I'm just gonna keep it simple here. So here on Google, you can see here it says ad, ad, ad. So usually you have three ads on top and three ads at the bottom. Here we don't have, uh, yes, we do. So three ads at the bottom. So basically, if you don't have time and you don't want to spend a lot of money just to rank in the first 10 organic spots, well, you can pay for ads. So basically, depending on the keywords you want to be um, displayed for, it's going to be a different price. Also, depending on the region. So a lot of different variables. But basically, it can cost a lot of money. But I also find out that the return on investment is great on Google in, in my experience. So the thing is, when I get clients that ask me, do you offer SEO services? Well, usually what I tell them is, um, I can offer SEO services because I got an SEO partner I work with, which is really good at what he does. But when they want to, when they're in a hurry, because the truth is when it comes to SEO, so search engine optimization, sometimes depending on the industry, it can take from 12 to 24 months to get results and be on the first page. Now, some customers don't have that time. And when that's the case, it's better to go for SEA, search engine advertisement. You pay and from day one, you get some clicks and you get some leads. So in your case, if you wanna make money with web design, 
This is one thing you can do. And from day one, you're going to start getting some leads. And then it's up to you to do the conversion. And that's why I said initially that your portfolio is greatly going to help. Because if you get some leads and you got nothing to show, and maybe the person clicked on 10 different ads, you know, tapping different keywords. So you need to stand out. That's where your portfolio is going to help. Of course, your sales skills, your social skills, all those skills are going to be of importance. But at the end of the day, most of the time, it's your portfolio that's going to make the difference. Now, I really like the SEA way of making money with web design because it's really straightforward. You put money in, you see the leads, and you make money back. And it's kind of really fast compared to some of the other means. Number seven networking now when i say networking of course you can do it on linkedin but what i'm talking about is face-to-face -face business networking meetings so you have to physically go there and i know it may sound kind of counterintuitive and kind of weird because after all i'm the digital alchemist and we talk about all things digital but what i found out is that it was easier for me to actually convert by going face-to-face -face in those networking meetings plus usually the way they work is that you need to be referred. So someone's going to say, okay, I trust this guy and here's someone that needs a website. So when I'm being introduced, the barriers are already really low because the person I'm, be I'm being introduced to already feel like they can trust me because I was introduced by someone they trust. Now, of course, that goes both ways. So because the person, the other person in the group is giving you their trust, you need to deliver because if you don't, you're not going to last in those groups. So basically, the idea is very simple. There might be 15 to 40 people in those groups. You're going to meet them once a week, every week. And basically, let's say that there's a plumber in this group. OK, and let's say that one of your clients says, oh, I got some issues at home. Do you know, do you happen to know a good plumber? then you're going to introduce the plumber from your group and vice versa. If one of his clients needs a website, he's going to introduce you. So it's based on trust and also people are going to watch you in the group. Do you deliver on your promises? Do you do good work? But if you do good work, if you're ethical enough, then you can make serious money. And the, the good thing is that it's recurring because it keeps on coming. And the better you work, the better you're going to be referred even by the clients themselves. Now, why isn't everybody doing that if it's so great? But the answer is simple. You need to pay a fee to be in those groups. So it can range from, I don't know, 500 bucks to 1,500, 2,000, I don't know. But where I live, I've seen this between 500 bucks per year to 1,500. And it may sound like a lot, especially if you're broke, but let me tell you, you can make your money back really fast, especially when you do web design. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is that in those groups, one of the rules in most of these groups is that there's no competition between members. So let's say you manage to get into one group as a web designer. There won't be another web designer. So when it comes to web design and building websites, it's going to be just for you. So no competition in this group. Now, there may be several groups in the same organization, but at least in your group, in your geographical area, you be the only one that can sell web design services or that can be referred to within the group. And you may have guessed it with the previous point, SEA, networking is my favorite way of making money with web design because not only can you get higher paying customers but also you don't have to cold call call email and just constantly trying to grind plus you get to work with businesses that more than likely you would never had a chance to work with if you had cold emailed them or cold called them now i wish i would have had this tip when i got started so if you enjoyed this video make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you want more web design goodness make sure you subscribe and smash the notification bell so that you don't miss anything and if you'd like to see what my typical day looks like as a web designer make sure you click on the video that's going to appear on screen and i'll see you in the next one until then take care and stay safe cut